Hi, I want to welcome everybody to uh, the uh, uh, our uh, April 14th uh, District 6 stakeholder meeting uh, taking place here at the Alexander residence uh, at 230 Bay Street in the community room. Um, our co-host for this meeting is the Alexander is the uh, Alexander Tennis Association, the Alliance for Bear District 6, the North Market Business Association, and the uh, Tennis Association Coalition, and we uh, also have Tip Top Market as one of our, our co-sponsors that they're donating drinks for the meeting. So, uh, what we do first is uh, what I call introductions, just briefly go around the room so we see who's here, say your name, um, and, uh, and if you're affiliated with anything, do that. And then we'll start going to the next item on the agenda. Okay, so my name is Michael Nolte. I'm the uh, executive director of Alliance for Bear District 6 and uh, my program manager. Marcus Phillips, partly attorney of the Alliance, public safety chair, land use chair, um, and I live on 12th floor in this program. I'm Vinny Story. I live next door. I'm a videographer for uh, public access TV political documentaries as well as uh, a television show host for calling TV shows also on public access. I am David Lyle, I'm one of the uh, directors here. Uh, my name's Erasmo, I'm a journalism student from San Francisco State. What's your name? Oh, Susan Bryan, I'm a resident uh, treasurer of Alliance for Better District 6, and I live across the street. Oh, no, down the street. Uh, Mark? Uh, okay. My name is Mark Reddy. I am the, an attorney. I'm here with my clients, and I live in a place on Fell Street. I represent actually a number of uh, places in this neighborhood, including Piano Fight, which is Caddy Corner, and Little Ridge. My name is Joe Ontario. I'm a, the chef partner of. Uh, Mr. Tipple's reporting studio opening up on 39th Bell uh, this um, summer this year. Hello, my name is J Jay Bordlow. I'm the founder of Mr. Tipple's reporting studio, opening up at 39th Bell Street. I'm Larry Williamson. I live in this building, and I'm one of the co-chairmen of the East. Is it the East? Who wanted to walk Street Neighborhood Watch? Yeah, the Neighborhood Watch. Okay. Okay, Robert, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, Robert Cadillac Hotel. Okay, great. Uh, Charles Sheena with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Okay. Hi, I'm Juan Carlos Pensino um, with the Mayor's Office of Economic and Workforce Development. Thank you. Lieutenant Jim Bay with General Wayne Thank you. Okay, Dennis. Dennis Eisner, um, Administrative Officer for the Okay, great. Uh, on the back, we have a uh, ground roll. Uh, we are videotaping, so we kind of don't speak too loud unless you're part of, it's part of the meeting, so we don't uh, distort the, uh, the video. And, uh, or, and recognize this and try to keep your comments positive so that uh, we have a, a productive meeting. And uh, it also has guidelines for uh, door prices and food. If we have food, we'll start that after our first presentation. We'll start getting food in the back. So, um, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? All right, so moved. So, a second? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Um, motion passed. Uh, uh, membership chair. So, organization, or something. Uh, uh, organization, organization of, it's uh, two ways of people. We, we receive income, one is through uh, membership dues and the other is through donations at our meetings. So we're gonna have, to have uh, David just pass it around, the donation can to everybody uh, to uh, help defer the cost of our meetings. Uh, and, and what we do also is not just our meetings, we do a lot of other things for uh, an extra expenses. Um, also, um, uh, hopefully everybody in the room has signed in. And uh, that's the Okay. Uh, so we ask everybody to keep their membership uh, current, and uh, uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. 
Um, I don't see uh, anybody here from the health department to speak on behalf of uh, quality of life. All right. That's a notion. Uh, well, we'll, we'll just uh, uh, move on to the next item then. Uh, the uh, Tenderloin pedestrian lighting project from the uh, San Francisco PU. You can see. Uh, you can watch it. I guess you can use this table up here. Thank you uh, for having me here. Um, my name is Charles. I'm with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. We maintain about 25, 26,000 streetlights here in the city. The other uh, 15,000, 17,000 are maintained by pg and &E. I'm here to obviously talk about the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission streetlights. Um, before I get into the Tenderloin Pedestrian Lighting Project, I do want to talk about the citywide LED streetlight project. So I mentioned that we maintain about 25,000 um, streetlights here in the city. 18,500 of them are what we call high pressure sodium cobra head style streetlights. Very common, they're our most common streetlight, they're the most common streetlight in the United States. Like everyone else in the country, like what we've been seeing throughout California, we are converting our high pressure sodium lights, see the orange glow, to new LED lights. Some of that has actually already happened in the Tenderloin, specifically in this neighborhood. Um, but so we are doing that throughout the city. And so the old high pressure sodiums are, be, are going to be converted to LEDs. These LEDs last 15 to 20 years. These high pressure sodiums last three to five years. So significant maintenance savings. These LEDs use 50% less energy than these lights. These LEDs are wirelessly controlled. They can be remotely, the light levels can be adjusted remotely, raise the light level, lower the light level. Um, that wireless control will tell us when that light is about to fail. So instead of the light failing a month later, someone calls 311, they tell us, we go, fix, we go fix it. We're hoping to get that information before it fails from the wireless control and go out and fix it. So in every way, these lights are superior to these lights, which is based on 1950s, 1960s technology. So we are doing that throughout the city. Any questions before I get into specifically what we're doing here in the Tenderloin, which is which is this and more? What about the antique goblet light? Right. So the the LED conversions are only for the high pressure sodium cobra head lights, which are not the antique goblet lights. Those will be converted later, um, but it's not a part of this program because we want to try and maintain the antique look, the historic fixtures as much as possible. We are running into a problem with old historic fixtures, light poles that date back to the 1920s, 1930s, and they no longer make the bulbs to fit in them. And that is proving problematic, because then we have to switch out the fixture, put a new bulb in there, and often that new bulb doesn't fit in the enclosure, and it's created all sorts of problems, but that's a different story for another time. Yes? Um. Light, LED is for light emitting diode. I should have mentioned that. Yes, light emitting diode. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, so let me get to some specifics regarding the tenderloin. Let's see. Okay. So, does everyone know about the new hospital being built? on Van Ness, the CPMC Cathedral Hill Hospital. Yeah. So many years ago, when they were negotiating to build that hospital, uh, I'm not quite sure of the history of it, but money was set aside as part of a benefit package with that hospital to upgrade the street lights here at the Tenderloin specifically. It's about three to four million dollars, that money is there, and it is only earmarked for this Tenderloin street light upgrade project. So I'm gonna talk about two options and then I'm gonna give you a chance to give some feedback after I talk about the two options, so bear with me. So 
So option number one is going to affect about 15 blocks of the tenderloin. You can see that right there. Uh, I think including where we are right now. Um, and on those 15 blocks, they're going to remove and replace the high-pressure sodium cobra headlights with twin teardrop holes, as you can see pictured there. Um, uh, they're going to do that on four um, north-south blocks and six um, um, east-west blocks. Um, these lights will en these lights will enhance uh, lighting for pedestrians for vehicle vehicular movement. Um, they will upgrade the light, but in addition to that, um, they're going to add new aesthetics to the Tenderloin's central corridor. Um, so revitalization measure for again the Tenderloin's Tenderloin central corridors. Um, um, and it's definitely a lighting upgrade from the standard high-pressure sodium cobra head style lights or cobra head style LED lights that are currently here. Um, and so that is, uh, that is option number one. Let's go to option number two. So option number two is a little different. Option number two affects 31 blocks. The difference is all existing lights, and that, those are those cobra head lights, all those lights remain. What we're going to do is we're going to add 16 feet high pedestrian poles. Um, we're going to add about 70 of them, approximately two new poles per block. And so there you see the existing cobra head lights, which will all go to LED. And there you see the new pedestrian light faced more towards the sidewalk um, that will be added two per block about 31 blocks. So that's, you know, it's a pretty simple project. There's two options. Um, one is going to be the um, more aesthetic fixtures to replace the existing high pressure sodiums and a smaller block uh, impact or lesser block impact, impact. The second project keeps all the high pressure sodiums, all the culvert heads, and adds two pedestrian lighting um, poles per block. So it's pretty simple. So I will take any comments and feedback. I'm going to walk back and get my notepad so I can write down your uh, feedback. But go ahead. Is that either or or, or, or both of those things? Are it's right? either or. Sorry, I should have made that clear. The uh, money can only fund one project. We have two options that we're looking at. And what is the, uh, the general consensus with Um, You know, there hasn't been too much of a consensus. Um, yeah, I can tell you some pros and cons. So, so the Tenderloin currently has some of the highest wattage lights in the city. Like if you think, we, we maintain the lights throughout the entire city. Residential, downtown, all neighborhoods, um, trees, you know, there's all sorts of lighting challenges. Here in the Tenderloin, we have the most lights per block, typically, and we have like 400 watts per light. That's our highest wattage. On some residential street lights, you get down to 75 watts. There is a lot of light here in the Tenderloin. And so when you think about how you want to improve lighting, you can, you, know, you can look at it in a couple of ways. One, you can redo in 15 blocks, like replace the existing generic high pressure sodium style cobra headlights with these, what we call, what do we call, these more decorative or ornamental twin teardrop holes, um, which will have you know, a bit of a revitalizing effect for downtown, uh, for not downtown for the central tenderloin area. Um, it will improve lighting. Um, like I said, I don't think there is really a lighting issue, but it will improve the lighting. It will increase the amount of light. It will improve the quality of light and how the light is dispersed onto the sidewalk and to the road. The other option, which covers a bigger footprint, but has um, less of an aesthetic, revitalizing kind of impact, is because so you, you keep those high pressure sodiums, which will be converted to LEDs, and you added pedestrian lights, two per block, um, which adds, you know, which are faced out, outwards towards the sidewalk, which will, you know, add light for uh, primarily pedestrians. So this will be brighter. Well, these are very bright. Um, with, with, with the additional lighting fixtures, with the right pedestrians, it makes them right. brighter. This will increase light, and this will increase light. There are two different ways of doing it. Yeah, they both increase light. There's no doubt about it. The generalized purpose of the high sodium is 
was originally to light up the neighborhood to cut down on criminal activity. Right. Anytime you take away that potency of light, right. it doesn't matter if you change it or whatever you're doing, you're increasing the risk of criminal activity in areas of darkness. I know when they change the lights on the muni poles and some of the poles down here, areas of sidewalk became pitch black. Right. And people now are terrified to walk down the street just to get their own building. Right. Um, so that's something we have to look at to be very careful of. Um, and two, um, for people who do go out at night, the more light there is, whether it's option one or option two, the more light there is, the people on the sidewalk themselves feel safer because they can see all the way around them and not have to worry about somebody jumping out in the shadows. So something to be aware of, whichever option you choose. Right. So let me address your first point. So when we convert, because you know the largest citywide project will convert all of these uh, high pressure sodiums to LED lights, uh, and that will be happening in the Tenderloin, it's happening in parts of the Tenderloin. Um, that LED lights will enhance safety. They disperse light better onto the sidewalk, into the street. They're generally sometimes a little brighter, although we, you know, we can dim them, but they're, they're, they are bright light. And so going from the high pressure sodium to LED lights will only illuminate the neighborhood better and enhance safety. Um, in terms of your second point, um, for both of these options, they will um, cast more light illuminate the sidewalks sidewalks better. Um, it just kind of depends on the footprint that you want to do and if you want to go for the more aesthetic option, which will add more light, but it's more centrally focused into that you know, central tenderloin area, uh, both will improve light as it is today in the tenderloin. Any other questions? Um, I would say this one because it has a bigger footprint. Because it's higher up. So it, well, no, so it covers more sidewalk space. Uh, and then the other thing to do is to recognize that we are also a, a, a historic district, so the other one looks better because of the historic. Right. This has a more historic ornamental. Um, it's you know the aesthetics are more intricate and appealing than than options two. So, so between the first one and the second one, which more uh, angry bugs. Hmm. Um, I mean, as far as you know, more more lighting or more more actual uh, actual poles. And stuff. Right. So option two gets you more poles, so that means more light for more sidewalk space. Option one gets you less poles, um, the equal amount of light for for the sidewalk, but it's going to reach less sidewalks because you're going to put in less poles. So obviously. Starting down here has always been safety, right? And obviously, uh, we want to see as much safety enhancement as possible. So, I mean, uh, just on that issue alone, uh, covering more sidewalks is more uh, helpful to the neighborhood than a minor number of blocks and fewer blocks uh, being covered. Uh, uh, and uh, obviously, I'm, I'm not sure if you have certain coverage area for each one. Um, yeah, we do. So you can see there's, if you want to come up, you can see the map of the coverage area. And this, the option two is obviously a uh, larger coverage area. Where's that? Okay. Sure, that's um, okay. You can so, come and, and look. And I'm sorry, because um, I was back there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, um, so what, it was option two that had a larger footprint? Yes, option two is a larger footprint. Okay, and now is there, are there any issues with like, you know, ADA accessibility with like making sure that we have some sidewalks that are um, I am not aware of any, any ADA okay. sidewalk issues. Yeah, now uh, the output of lumens yes. would be greater in option two. Per light, not necessarily. But in aggregate, yeah. yes, because there will be more lights, I so yes. Uh -huh. So then the light would be diffuse enough. You know, with this option, it, you know, I mean, there might be dark spots. Not necessarily. No. So, so if you, like, if you, so if you take a block and you put these lights on, and then you take the next block and you do this, 
both will have lots.